mouth. I mean, you don't know what somebody's going to say, and, and, and it's great. I mean, it really is. There, there's, a, there's, a, there's sort of just you, you throw the camera on it. We're very confident that, that, that we can edit most things out and, and work with our editing team. But, you know, so, um, but it's just great to let people be themselves and, and really see them for what they are. So uh, the funniest instance is, yeah, we're going to have a blooper reel and, and some of those fun things, but it, it's a really a celebration of, of the diversity of this, of this country and, and of just, you know, the genres of music, backgrounds in music, and just how people express themselves with music. I think that's been, that's been one of the most fun parts of this journey. Absolutely, and I'd say so, that, that dealing with this, this genre of film, um, a documentary with it being unscripted, that makes it so much fun for us as well because really anything can happen. And every time we turn the camera on, we just really don't know what to expect. And I'd say, you know, 90% of the time we are really just blown away um, with the impact that um, like music therapy is having on people's lives. But, you know, every once in a while, every once in a while there's, you know, the guy who can't answer the questions to save his life. But, mm-hmm, but again, mm-hmm. that's, that's a gem in and of itself because we're talking about it now. So, <laughs> yes. did, Now, did you end up uh, in Atlanta, Georgia, or anywhere in Georgia? We did. We were we were in Atlanta uh, at the George Center in, in September, I think, of this past year, okay. in 2012. That's where Sabina oh, yeah. is from, and that's why she's asking. <laughs> oh, yeah. very cool. Very cool. I feel like we might have talked to before, Sabina. I, I, I feel like I had talked to a Sabina before that was in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't know if that, if that was the case. But. <laughs> I don't think it was me. Um, this is yeah. the first time meeting you and, and hearing about your, your project. So, um, But I, I'm definitely interested and intrigued now as far as seeing the, the documentary and uh, seeing especially the Atlanta part, you know. Any fun oh. stories for, come out of Atlanta? Oh, we have amazing stories out of Atlanta, and you know the the, the great thing the, the the great thing about Atlanta was we're, we were able to film music therapy in action, and, and music therapy happening right before our eyes. So it wasn't necessarily the therapist talking about it, and then us, you know, having other clips given to us. We were really able to film the actual processes and the actual communication and interaction between the therapist in group settings and in individual settings. And we're not going to give away individual, you know, stories right now, but what I can right. say is mm-hmm. right. what, I, what I can say is is that we, we captured one of the most profound interactions of music therapy that, that we've seen as we've traveled across the country and we are we are so excited to, to be able to show people not only the not only the, the, the interaction of that actually happening, but but more of the background of how profound that interaction actually was. So Atlanta also gave us our interview with, with uh Ben Folds and, and which we, we hope to have in the in the film as well. So Atlanta, Georgia was, was really a special time for us. We're excited we'll be coming back. So if there's a possibility of us meeting up, it would be great. Uh, but it, but Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia has definitely been a special place for us, and, and it's provided us so many stories. Yeah, oh, that would be definitely. so cool. Sabina, you should meet them. I lost yeah, out on my be stance fun. because of my fibro, and I couldn't meet up with them. But hopefully oh. someday we can do that again. But I know Sabina loves meeting people, and she's a talker, although it doesn't seem like it on this interview. She is. <laughs> No, this is great. Yes, I mean, we we love Sorry. we love meeting uh, the the people. Honestly, I mean the face to face interviews and being able to cultivate these relationships is is so important to us. So please, like let's let's not let this be the last conversation we have. <laughs> That'd be fantastic. I do love music as well. Um, I actually took a class in uh, junior high and learned piano and guitar. I did better at piano, but I've lost it, of course. I'd like to learn again, but um, I just haven't had the chance. Um, I had another question, actually. Um, I kind of wanted to go and check, uh, find out more about this event coming up. The Music Care mm-hmm. Concerts um, help raise funds for music therapy and music education programs. The next one is on February 23rd, this Saturday, in Arlington, Virginia, at the Artisphere. What will be going on that day, and who's performing? Well, that is going to be a celebration of live music, bhangra dancing, and the photography of Sam Maloney. And, and, and we're trying to combine music, dance, and arts in, in to show the synchronicity between all of those things and their ability to, to, to support a music program uh, called Young Women Drum. And I'll let Michelle actually talk a little bit about the program that we're going to, uh, that we're going to support on Saturday. 
Yeah. Um, so, mm-hmm. yeah, Universal Music Care is all about live music, keeping music alive. I mean, that's my, my Twitter tagline. Um, yeah. It's, it's um, you know, we see music programs shutting down, and we want to do something to change that. So what can we do? Well, we're going to put on a concert and raise money for, for a music program. And Young Women Drum is – it's actually Young Women Drumming Empowerment Project, um, also known as YDEP. It is – an incredible program. I just this past Sunday uh, had the privilege of drumming with these girls at another one of their fundraisers. And it is so powerful to see these young girls. They started about eight years old and they go through to the early 20s. And then, of course, all the graduates come back and mentor the younger girls because it's made such an impression on their life. But through music, these girls who you know, perhaps they weren't encouraged um, are not being encouraged to uh, speak out or um, find their inner beauty. Um, you know, these young girls are finding it in the circle, in the drum circle. They're finding safety and their personal power, and they're taking that back out into the world. And the girls are going on to travel the world. They're going on to college. They're uh, breaking out of poverty and um, really finding great, great success. So, uh, we're really, really excited to be supporting this program. I, from from a, as a woman, you know, I'm really um, this program really means a lot to me because art has been the way that, specifically through dancing, has been the way that I've processed just life in general. And as I see these girls using the drums to do that, it, I just think it's so so important that it reaches more kids, um, particularly children who don't have music education programs in their schools. These programs are just really important for all of us to recognize as real assets to our communities. Yeah, it's giving them a voice that they didn't have and giving them some camaraderie between um, the other women that are involved in it. I did watch that video and was so impressed by it. And I, I didn't know what I was going to see when I when you had tweeted it out. And I tell you, I can see how it can change a young woman's life by giving them a way to express themselves through music, poetry, whatever else that they have going on over there, and and making friends and bringing it out into other people to get them involved in it. Yes, and that's one set of girls there, but the girls meet, and there's. There's such diverse backgrounds. Um, you know, even my daughter, who is six now, she's a little young for the drumming group, but she goes and participates on Saturdays sometimes, um, and she can't wait to turn eight years old so that she can join the girls. And, and it really, you know, even though they don't necessarily have, you know, it may seem on the surface that they don't have a lot in common. When they mm-hmm. start drumming, they have everything in common. And it's right. like all of those, all of those um you know, those uh, stereotypes and and inhibitions and all of that falls away and they begin to communicate first through music, but that music really creates the bridge to create long-lasting friendships. So it's a really powerful program and I'm really glad you got to see the video. That's exciting. It is. It is very exciting. I would recommend anybody go and watch it. Um, What I was thinking, too, is that Oh, I lost my train of thought. Isn't that horrible? Well, let's go on to the other thing when I think of it. Oh, it was, what I know what I was going to say. It was like It's almost like a sorority by bringing them together and empowering them with different things. Yes, absolutely. And also, you know, the young girls get the opportunity to, you know, have mentor, like art, artists from the community come in and speak with them and drum with them. So they get to see you know, women in the community who are making a difference through their art. And it, that in, in and of itself inspires the young girls to think really, really big and dream really big, where they may have you know, not seen the possibilities beforehand. Now the world just opens wide up for them. So that's also a really great, great thing. And, you know, another thing I, I think about, too, is I don't think the schools do that as much anymore. I think if their parents are the ones that tell them to dream big, their children to dream big and, you know, work hard for what you want, but who else out there is telling them to do this? So something like this is an enhancement to those parents that are hoping and wishing and dreaming for their children and pushing it, not pushing it onto them, but encouraging them. 
Well, you know, I, and I and I have a background in athletics and music, and and you know, not every not every kid is is made to be an athlete. Not every right. kid is made to be a musician. And and this really just gives parents, it gives kids, it gives teachers options. It also gives the opportunity for adults to collaborate in these young persons' lives. It gives an opportunity mm-hmm. for teachers from inside and outside of the school to start to start to not just cultivate certain subjects, but to cultivate the individual. And that's really the point of education. That's that's my that, that's my academic background is in history and education. And 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 cultivating the whole individual has has got to be the goal of, of every educator, regardless if they're music or not. So I, I love the idea of the of these community programs and schools coming together. And that is really one of the other facets of universal music care is to bring these this music community, you know, to bring live musicians and the kind of the band aspect, to bring the music there aspect, to bring the music education aspect together in, in one place in, in an art, music and art setting. So it's, it's an environment that obviously all of them are comfortable with and really to try to create those relationships organically there and let them work with each other and let them talk with each other. And, and you know, and, 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 and I think if, if, if we're not all trying to build our individual little territories of this is just music therapy and this is just live music and we start to open it up and say, this is music, we're a music community, then, then mm-hmm. that's a lot stronger mm-hmm. than having having four small communities that are all just, right. you know, trying to fight each other. And so, we, you know, we really we really are excited about the, the collaborative efforts that, that have already started. Um, obviously, we're, we're, we, we collaborated on Twitter, and now, now this is happening. So um, it, it's really something that we've been able to see in real time, and, and now we get to, we get to enjoy it uh, with, with everybody else in, in a live music setting. So it really is a celebration for music, by music, with the hopes of elevating the perception of music. Now, with your trying to promote music therapy and supporting the music education programs, how do you present this to the schools or programs you're trying to help? We have conversations with them. You know, we're a small business, so a lot of them have been developed from, from uh, different referrals and word of mouth. Um, but we present what we're doing to them and let them know um, what it is we'd like to do. And, and then they sort of work with us in terms of tailoring, you know, what they'd like out of it or what their demographic is or what kind of music, you know, suits, you know, their 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 fundraising idea. So we, so we really try to make it a one-on-one process that, that really personalizes and, and, and fits the role of the school. Because you know what? Not every high school, not every middle school, not every music program is the same. And, and they have their own identities. So I think right. it's really important for us to respect those identities, work with them, and make sure that all of the partners of that project are, are on the same page. So it's really an interactive process with the partnering organization to create the best show possible for them. And I think you're helping a lot of children in schools these days with this program because arts and music and everything like that are the first to be cut. So a lot of schools don't even have it anymore. It, it's it's easy because what is it? They're just they're just acting. You know, they're just they're just singing. You know, what's that? Um, right. Again, I asked how much money does it cost to sing? It doesn't really cost any money to sing. So that I, you know, it costs money for music sheets and a piano. I understand that, but in in essence, to sing in in above itself, you don't need any money. Um, and and so you know, I I think it's an easy target because the way it has been devalued over time and, and that's mm-hmm. where we really see a benefit that's where we really see a benefit for our film, the case for music, because we are really showing the science behind this. Because Truth be told, there are experiments now that are showing that both sides of the brain are activated um, in certain situations where music is being played or, or being played in the background or certain interactions with it, which is allowing the brain to expand and, and open up, uh, which, which as over a period of time, the corpus callosum can actually grow. So in essence, music is increasing the size of the brain and the capacity and, um, and the efficiency of how it works. That it has nothing to do with a music program. That's that's a kid getting better in math, uh, history, uh, social studies, any of those other subjects. So I think when you see the evidence and when people, especially parents, are presented with, with not the benefits of, oh, they're going to put on a, another production of Oliver Twist, that's awesome because that's fun. Theater's fun. But, oh, my gosh, my, not only are they going to put on a production of Oliver Twist, now they'll be better in math. And, and that's a whole, uh, again, and that's connecting 
subjects. That's connecting teachers. That's connecting people inside the school to make it a better situation for the child, which is, always has to be the most important goal in mind when it comes to education. So that's what that's what really the, the aspect of our film from a scientific perspective we're hoping to, to present to people and allow them to digest the information, allow them to make the judgments for themselves, but we would like to present the, the, the you know, the critically and evidence-based uh, uh, research that, that's being done.